back to another episode of Project E46. I'm here with a car parked in front of the garage, and I think you know what's going to happen next. As you can see, I have the E46 sitting on jack stands. You may be thinking to yourself, ah, they can turn some more wrenches today. And you'd be absolutely right. Uh, we're going to be doing some more work on the E46 today. Hopefully it goes well, but you're never quite sure. That's why I'm vlogging the whole thing so you can watch me struggle. So, you may be saying to yourself, okay, we're going to turn some wrenches, but Jake, what are you going to do to the E46? Well, if you've been following along, you've seen that for the most part, I have the whole rear end of the car taken care of. Suspension, chassis reinforcement, all that stuff. But I haven't addressed as much stuff on the front of the car, specifically in the front suspension. Yes, I deleted the front sway bar and I installed Raceland coil opers, which are nice, but there's still a lot more to do here. And specifically, there's a big issue point with the E46 platform, and I'm gonna address that today. So today, I'm going to be replacing the front control arm bushings on my E46. Now, in order to replace control arm bushings on this car, that means I'm gonna have to need, I'm gonna need some new ones to put in there, which is exactly what I've got. These are pre-pressed in offset front control arm bushings from Condor Speed. These bushings are made of Delrin, which basically means they're completely solid and they are pre-pressed into OEM carriers. All right, so I mentioned before, but these are what are called offset front control arm bushings. You'll notice that, that the uh, center of the bushing here is offset, it's not in the center. Now, why do you wanna do that? Well, normally these bushings come from the factory completely dead on centered, and that's fine, but by offsetting the mounting point of this bushing, you get more front end caster, which not only improves handling, but it really sharpens up the steering response and makes the car more fun on turn in. Of course, Going Delrin versus the OEM avoided rubber bushing design means this is completely solid now. There's no deflection, which is going to make, again, the feeling of turn-in and the steering in general much tighter, reduce some of the slop in the E46's loose steering. Okay, so we are under the front of the E46 right now. This is the driver front wheel. Here is our front lower control arm. This is a complete assembly. It goes from here to the ball joint and the knuckle. Here are the front subframe, and then back here, which is the main area of the front control arm bushing right back there. Uh, I have no idea if he's been replaced with OEM or OE replacements if they're not original. <laughs> Let me move the camera a little bit. Hopefully you can see this guy right here is what we're gonna be replacing. Now you see it's basically a rubber bushing inside a carrier which mounts it to the chassis. Now at first glance, these bushings look okay, even though they're soft rubber, but you wanna see why we're upgrading these. So what I'm gonna do is focus the camera here on the front control arm bushing. Now I'm gonna grab the driver's wheel and just pull it front to back. Ready? Watch the bushing. You can hear the bushing making a squishing sound and you obviously see all that side to side and front to back deflection in the bushing. Now when you're driving the car on the street, normally that's fine, but when you're on the trace track, really pushing the car hard, all that deflection, one, it's giving you a really loose, vague steering sensation, and two, it's actually causing dynamic alignment change and not in a good way. Basically, you could be dynamically losing or gaining caster and camber as the car goes over bumps and the steering undulates going around corners, and that's not good. So by going to a solid, a completely solid bushing, you're eliminating all of that flex, giving you a much more solid steering feel. So we have these brand new, beautiful bushings from Condor Speed, but we're gonna need some tools to put these in the car. From the look of things, we're gonna need a 17 millimeter socket with an extension to get our wheel off, a ratchet, preferably a half inch because it's bigger, and a 16 mil socket for the carrier for the front control arm bushing. Uh, also, I have WD-40 and my three pound sledgehammer in case we need it, but hopefully we don't. So let's get to it. All right, so with the wheel off, we have a little bit more access to what we're looking for here. Uh, don't mind all the oil leaks. I have a leaky power steering hose. It's just destroying everything down here. But um, the first thing we need to do is that if you look at the front control arm bushing, the whole little carrier assembly, we see that there's this front subframe brace in the way, so we need to remove this. There are a series of 16 millimeter bolts, one, two, three, and four, so we're gonna take off this brace so we have full access to the carrier. 
Okay, so the front subframe brace is almost off. The last bolt holding the whole thing together is actually inside this little void where the front jack point is on the, on the front cross member. Right here. All right, so we have full access to the front guitar and bushing carrier right here. We have our half inch ratchet and 16 mil socket and we're gonna take these two bolts off right here. Okay, so these might actually be the original front control on bushings from 1999. Because, look at this. This is a California car. There's no rust in this entire car. These are starting to rust. These are already rusted out. That's why they're so stuck in there. That's nuts. These bushings are just press fit onto the end of this control arm. There's no bolt over here or anything. So it should just be a matter of pushing this off. Now the only question is how nicely this is gonna come off the control arm bushing. Sometimes you have to use a saw and cut through the whole rubber, and sometimes you take a big hammer and knock the whole thing off. So it's really luck of the draw as to which way this is gonna go, so. All right, so for the record, I wasn't sure how bad these things were at first glance, but they are, the insides of the bushing are just trash. Um, honestly, these are junk. So actually, there's actually grease popping off one of the bushings, so these things are just done. So I'm glad we're replacing these. Okay, looking at the camera, that took, I think, 45 seconds. Yeah, so the bushing, um, it looks like it's uh, fluid filled in. It, the bushing tore. Um, it's actually no longer centered on there, but um, obviously the rubber came off in a couple different pieces. But yeah, that's uh, this one side off in about 45 seconds. Not bad, huh? Okay, so we have the driver's side front control arm bushing out of the car. I wanted to show you the difference between the stock bushings and the Condor Speed Delrin offset bushings. OEM, Condor Speed. Sorry, I shook the camera there. But you can see they're both OEM carriers. The distinction obviously here is in the bushing type. The OEM bushing is a voided rubber design. Um, there's huge gaps here where it's just not solid at all, there's just nothing, and that allows for all that squishiness and deflection. I'm actually, I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, but I can move that whole thing in there by my hand, let alone the weight of the car when you're steering going around corners. This is the Condor Speed, obviously it's completely, it's completely solid, I can't move this, it's not possible. That's what's going to give us that, that increased front end rigidity and better steering feel. Okay, so we have our the end of our control arm fully exposed. Uh, I need to clean some of the filth off of it and kind of get it ready to assemble the new control arm bushing and housing on here. There is a definitive stop on the control arm right here where it bumps up in diameter. That's, I guess, the, basically the bushing will bottom out on that point and that's when you know it's fully installed. So the more you know. Okay, so we have the old control arms off, the control arm bushings off, the control arms cleaned, and you think we're ready to go, but there's one more step we need to address in this particular installation. Because these bushings are offset, there is a distinct left and right side. Basically, if you, <laughs> obviously the goal is to put these in and increase your positive front end caster, but obviously if you put them in backwards or on the wrong side, you're actually gonna get less caster and make the car handle worse. So you need to figure out which one is left and which one is right because they aren't marked. And it's kind of an easy way to do that. Okay, so this is the driver front suspension on the E46 and right now there's no front control arm bush installed on the control arm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna simulate what making this be offset, what that would do to the front end of the car. That's basically how you're gonna check. So, Look right here. If you push the control arm towards the outside of the car, that pushes your control arm forward, giving you more leverage. On the flip side, if you push the control arm inward, due to the curvature of the control arm, it's actually gonna push the wheel further back in the wheel well. So obviously to increase caster, you want to push the control arm 
edge towards the outside of the vehicle, leveraging that control arm forwards. So that's how you install your offset control arm bushings. So for example, I'm what I am holding is the driver's side offset control arm bushing. And you can see that because the hole is facing the outside of the car, which is gonna give our control arm more forward leverage, increasing our caster. Got it? Piece of cake. All right, so now we've gotten to the real challenging part of this process. It's all been pretty straightforward so far, but now we actually need to install our new front control arm bushings on the car. Now the real question is, how do you get this to slip on to the control arm? It's metal on metal, there's so much friction. How do you do that? Now I've seen people use things like bushing grease and bearing grease to help increase the sort of like, or I suppose reduce the amount of friction between these surfaces and get it to slide on. Now that's nice, but the problem is it's a grease. It wants to stay there, it's oil-based. It, it really wants to just stick there. And the problem is that after time, that could cause the bushing to actually move around a little bit, and that would obviously not be good. So this is a bit of a pro tip I've picked up online after looking around quite a lot. You want to use something that offers increased lubricity and reduced friction, but it's temporary, it'll wash away. What better thing to use than something we all have at our home, which is dish soap. Now the principle being is dish soap and water, it's really slick, has a lot of lubricity, but because it's dish soap, you spray it with a hose and it washes away, it doesn't stay there. So. Let's apply our little dish soap cheating method mixture uh, onto the edge of the control arm. So here is the passenger side Condor Speed Offset Control Arm Bushing. And you see inside the metal sleeve, uh, it's a hexagonal shape with two reliefs on either side that matches, in theory, the end of the control arm. However, it's lined up, the issue is, you line everything up, and it kind of fits, but kind of doesn't, and... You don't want to mangle this, nor do you want to mangle this. So what you want to do, at least in my case, I had some spare sandpaper in the garage, it's 220 grip, really anything will work. Tiny little piece, don't need that much. And we're really just going to go around the edge of this hexagonal shape and kind of just like make sure there's no rough spots or anything like that. And really you want to kind of focus on the edge here because that's really the hardest part to slip over. And it doesn't take much, it just takes maybe a few minutes doing this. Getting back up to speed, so I sanded down the edge of this control arm for maybe a few minutes with 220 grit sandpaper. You don't have to go hard on it, you don't have to put a belt sand or anything, just do it by hand really quickly. All right, so we have this cleaned up and we have our control arm lined up and we're gonna do a little test fit really quick. So you, again, remember to line up your notches in this insert to the notches on the end of the control arm, like this. And look at that, we're pretty close with the light sanding. There's no lubrication or anything, it just went right on, perfect. So now, we're gonna need some soap. This is car washing soap, but really, dish soap, car wash soap, whatever. So we're gonna do the same job.
All right, so I have my torque wrench here. I believe, I've just been Googling the torque spec for these carrier bolts is 45 foot pounds. So let's see what we got. All right, guys, so the install is done. I want you to take a look at the wheel, the front wheels of the E46. So as I mentioned before, it might not have been very clear, but here's your imaginary center line, right? Imagine the wheel opens the other side are even, look straight from the middle of the fender down. See how far forward the wheel is pushed on the E46. Now, after installing the offset control arm bushings, Obviously every car has caster stock, but not nearly this much. This is a massive gain in front end caster, and hopefully front end grip. Take a look. All right guys, so we are sitting inside the E46. Hopefully I've tightened everything down to spec. Uh, and now we're gonna go for a little test drive. Of course, after doing this modification, there's a big asterisk here is that I pulled apart the whole front suspension and doing this in my front end alignment is now way off. Uh, I don't know how bad it is, but in the last, my one series, I replaced the front control arms. And after doing that, the car was basically undrivable until it was aligned. It basically was really snappy at lock and pretty rough. So this isn't gonna be a full test. It's gonna be a quick drive around the block. You get a feel for things, obviously that Test, the true test will come when I go to the track in a couple days and start ripping this thing. Um, yeah, let's get to it. So you know the asterisk, you know the caveats, and you also know, as I explained, the potential benefits of going to a solid control arm bushing, especially an offset one like this. Uh, the car visibly has a ton more caster than it did before. I thought Condor Speed said I gained about three quarters of a degree of caster, but it visibly looks like way more than that. Um, yeah, seatbelts on, traction control off, but uh, let's go for a little drive. So sorry if I'm being a little bit quiet, I'm listening for thunks, clunks, and any sign of impending doom. Obviously when you pull the whole front end of the car apart, there's a possibility you didn't do something right, so I'm just kind of listening very carefully. So as you can see, my steering is a little bit off, though actually it was a little bit off before, uh, just from going drifting and throwing stuff out of alignment. So that's no big deal, you hear the water diff clattering. Even at low speed, the steering does feel firmer, which in my thing, in, in, at least in my eyes, is a positive because when I got this car, I thought the steering was a little bit sloppy. Okay, not bad. Yeah, the steering's definitely a little bit heavier, which is nice. It's definitely a positive for the E46. Nothing seems to be doom and gloom. I haven't died and the car isn't caught on fire. So chalk it up to a positive. Uh, I will obviously cut in some footage of me driving the car more aggressively. Uh, after this, I have a drift day coming up in just a few days. So I'm glad I got this done. Hopefully when we get there, we can experience the full effect of, you know, the heavier steering, the added caster, and all the benefits of solid front control arm bushings. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you're enjoying these episodes. Uh, I know I am the car that so far has been a lot of fun overall. Uh, yeah, have a great day. Bye.